Welcome to this quick tutorial on how to log in and navigate through D2L. To get to this home page, just search dsbn.elearningontario.ca or in Google you can type DSBN D2L and it will be the first link. Once you arrive at this home page, you'll be prompted to write your username and password. The username and password is the same username and password you use to log into network computers or your email. Once you have put in your username and password, just click login and it will bring you to your My Course homepage, which looks like this. It is on this page that you can access a variety of different supports. For instance, the first widget that you will see is the News widget. In this widget, we will post important information and updates to make you aware of any changes or issues that might be occurring within the D2L environment. For instance, in the News right now, we have added tutorials on activating your course, copying content, and changing home pages. We have also updated users that the help desk will now be supporting technical issues in the D2L environment such as assistance with logins, course shell creations, or copying content. Below the news tool widget is the content browser widget. In this widget there are a variety of different resources for you to explore on most of the tools within D2L. For instance, if you wanted to learn more about ePortfolio, you could click on the folder and within that folder there's a variety of other videos and tutorials that will help you explore and learn this program. Below this content widget is a needs assistance widget. This will help direct you to the proper supports. Note at the bottom there's a direct line to D2L if you are in need of immediate support directly from the company who creates the program. If we scroll back to the top of the page, you'll see that there's widgets on the right hand side. The My Courses widget shows all of the courses you have been enrolled in throughout the years. These courses are organized by year. For instance, 13-14 is the 2013-2014 year. Below that, there is a Teacher Resources widget. Inside here, there are a lot of other resources that you can access by just clicking on them. And below that, there are other widgets such as the Google App widget, which will update you on emails and other things of that nature, and the Learn360 generator, which can also be created as a widget with inside D2L. I'd like to also show you that your ePortfolio icon is here. If you click that and you want to go straight to ePortfolio, as well as Learn360 Plan Board, or to access the content that I showed you below, you can just click on this link. The bar at the top is a navigating bar and it will go with you on each page. For instance, if you click the My Home, it will take you back to the page you're seeing right now in case you would need to look up any content or any instructions. This right here is a drop down menu which will lead you to all the courses that you've been enrolled in. Note there's a search for course from which you can just type a short form and it will find the course. As you can see you can pin courses. What the pinning does is it brings the courses that you're using most regularly to the top so you don't have to search for them. As well in the navigation bar there are a variety of different alerts. Message, update, and subscription. Um, you will note that a little red dot will appear if you have any messages or updates that need to be read. Also, if you go to this drop-down menu, this is where you'll find your profile where you can update any profile information you want to share with others. Notifications. Notifications will go into a little more uh, later on in the course and if you want to change any of your account settings. As well, you'll notice cogs in the corner and they will allow you to have other privileges related to this course. Now that we've looked over the My Home course page, let's look at a course that students would use. So if we go up here to the drop-down menu, and I will choose the first course I just pinned, which was my grade 8 class last year. Once you've arrived at your course, you're going to notice that your navigation bar has stayed the exact same. But underneath the navigation bar, you'll see your school logo and information. This theme is set automatically. Underneath that, there are the tools organized under student tools and class tools, as well as different ways that you can connect with your class. Beside that is a very important icon that allows you to edit different aspects of the course. As you scroll through, you'll see that there's a variety of other options with regards to editing your course. One of the most important is course offering information. By clicking on course offering information, it allows you to change your course offering name, which will appear here, and it will also allow you to activate your course. Activating your course is key. Once the course is activated, students will be loaded into the course automatically in an overnight process, allowing students to have access to the course that you've set up. Remember to click Save once your course is active. Let's revisit the Edit Course button.
As you can see on your site setup, there's also a home page button. The home page button allows you to change the layout and change how your site looks. Inside this site, you'll see that there's a variety of preset home pages that you can choose from. Or at the top, you can click create home page and create your own home page and layout whatever way you would like to. If we go back to edit course, you'll also notice that there's a widget button. In this widget button, you'll see that you can access custom made widgets that may be made by yourself or someone else that you know, and system widgets such as the ones that you're regularly seeing such as calendar, content, and news tool. You have the ability to create a widget in here, but we'll look at that in a future tutorial. If we go back to edit course again, we'll look down another important button is this import, export, and copy components. It is here that you can copy information from other courses and bring it into your course. To do so, under course to copy, just click here and a box will appear and type the name of the teacher or course that you would like to copy from. If you already have access to that course, you may just click here and add select. You'll see at the bottom it says copy all components. If you want to bring over everything from within that course, you may just click that. But if you want to select specific components to bring over, you can select those as well. As you can see, you can pull over calendar, content, content display setting, course files. Course files is a very important file to bring over. This is all the files that you have used within the entire program. It's important because if you don't click on that file, you may end up with dead links throughout if there's files that are in here that are linked to say content. Once you have selected the files that you wanted, you just click continue and then finish and it will import those directly into your course. Now let's go back to the course page we were working on before. So to do that, I can simply go up to the navigation bar, click on the course that I would like, and here I am. But before we look at this course, let's look at what a blank course would look like for if you were to enter it for the first time. So I'm gonna go up here and select a course that has nothing in it. Now that this course is blank, it is easy to see the different widgets that are available when you log in for the first time. The most commonly used widgets are News, Calendar, and Content Browser. Let's first take a look at the News widget. This widget is very important. It is almost the quarterback of your course. In this news widget, you can put any upcoming information or news that you would want them to go through, but as well, you can also link them to anything within the site. So let's take a deeper look into this. If you click on news in the title bar, it brings you to this screen. This is where it allows you to add a new item in or manage your other items. So by clicking on new item, you're going to notice it opens up this HTML editor. This editor is very important as the same one is used throughout all of D2L. But before we look at the editor, remember you always have to add a headline. So I am just going to write welcome and then click into the HTML editor. When inside the editor, you'll note that there are many tools that you're used to seeing inside word processing programs. For instance, paragraph, bold, italics, underline, indents, if you want to center, a line right or left. They also have different font sizes, colors, and a variety of other tools you're used to seeing. A couple of tools you might not be used to seeing are these two. Insert stuff and insert quick link. If you click on insert stuff, it allows you to insert files and links from a variety of different places. For instance, my computer, course offering files, shared files, learning repository, ePortfolio, YouTube, Flickr, insert link, and even enter an embed code. This is relatively easy to do. For instance, if you wanted to insert a video from YouTube, you could click on there and it will search internally. So say we're doing plotting coordinates, you could just type that in the search. You'll see that a video will appear. You just click on that video. You're just going to scroll down to the bottom and hit next. It will show you a preview if you'd like to watch it in there and then insert. Once the video is in there, it shows you in the HTML editor, and if you publish it, it will bring it right into your news items. You see that we don't see the news items here because we got to make sure that we click this arrows down and it will allow us to see it. So if the students wanted to watch that video through here, they could really easily. If we go back to news, and new item and we look at the other button we talked about was the quick link button. This button allows us to link content from any of the other tools in D2L straight into the HTML editor. 
If you scroll down lower, you'll notice there's all these other features that you can have. For instance, availability. You can add a start date and an end date. You can add an audio recording if you want to give verbal instructions or you can attach a file. And there's other release conditions you can add if you want to explore them. Once you've added it, you can just publish and it will publish straight to your news feed. The next tool we'd like to look at is the calendar. If you'd like to see the calendar by month, you can just click here and it will show you a quick drop down, or you can click on calendar. In this view, you can see calendar many different ways. If you click on agenda, you'll see the next seven days of events you have. You can also click and look at it by day, by week, or by month, or you can pull up a whole list of whatever upcoming events you have. But to create an event, you just click create event, in the title, you would say if you had a test coming up, you could just write test. And then below this, you'll see that there's the exact same HTML editor as we've seen in the news. So if you would like to insert stuff, you may, or even insert a link to other tools, you may also. Once you have added into the HTML which you would like, you can scroll down and set the date that you would like it to occur as well as the time. You may also add restrictions or if it is a recurring event, you may click there. Then just click create. And when we go back to our home page, you will see that the event is posted under calendar. The final tool we'd like to look at is Content Browser. This tool allows you to organize all of your content into modules. For instance, if we click on Content Browser, it will bring us into a page like this. Now, if we wanted to add a module, say for instance Unit 1, we would just type that in there and then enter. You will see that the module comes up. If we want to add a sub-module, a folder with under that, so say we were doing um, geometry as one of our substrands, we could just type that and now we have a sub-module. You'll see that when you want to add content in, you would just click new and it has a variety of different options. Upload files, create a new file link. If you create a new file link, I'll just click that, it will bring you to the HTML editor where you can insert quick links and stuff. There is also, when you go in here, you can link to a link. You can add for managed files or add to objects from the LOR, to a checklist, discussion, Dropbox, quiz, and survey. So as you can see, you can very quickly build a course as you go through the content browser. One other aspect of Content Browser which is nice is that if you wanted to say Unit 1 but you didn't want students to see it yet, you could set it as draft. This allows it to still be in your content but not be seen by students and when it's time, you just click here and publish it and then the students will now have access to that folder. Now let's go back to the original course we were looking at and see what it looks like with content added. So as you can see under content, we have a variety of modules here if you look through them and if you click on one of the modules you'll see that within the module there are sub modules and if you click on that sub module there's the files that are attached I can also click on content browser and look at through this view so for instance if I go back to that media literacy I can click on here you'll see there's my subfolders in there and if I would like to click on this file it will come up in the preview mode right here and I, the students or myself can download it. If we go back to the home page you'll see that the news section is here where there's been images added, there's some an audio file, video files that students have worked on so it fills up and it ends up being a nice place to make your course page in colorful and engaging. So um, that is a quick overview of D2L that took you through the main tools. You'll, you'll notice that um, there are things about this page that are different from others. I've added different widgets in. For instance, here's a student schedule widget. So if they just click here, they'll be able to see their schedule for the year. Also, if we go down here, you'll see I have links to common sites that they use, Dream Rocks and Career Cruising. If I scan down some more, I have homework help. Um, and they can click on any of these icons and access these math and science apps. You'll see that in here they can access this Photoshop tutorial straight from the home page and even a Twitter feed if they would like to keep up to date on what's going on. And here's the 360 link generator I talked about earlier. So as you can see there are many useful tools within D2L that can help you support students in their learning. This was just a quick overview of D2L and there's a lot more to be learned. To do that, you remember you can go back to the home page 
and scroll down to the content section where there are all sorts of tutorials and support videos and even below that you can use the need assistance and contact teacher support or D2L support. Hopefully this video has helped you start your D2L journey and we look forward to helping you in any way we can.